Hey everyone, welcome back to Wild Arms R&D. We are going to be going over the latest update on the Swizzle Stick Hypervelocity Kinetic Energy Rocket. As you remember from our previous episode, we did our first test without any inhibitor. Um, it was quite a fiery experiment, but we learned a lot. Um, we've made a, quite a few updates since then. The mounts for the previous test were burned up really good, so we've decided to go with a cheaper alternative. We worked a lot in the last couple months on perfecting the inhibitor. Um, we had to figure out a way how to apply it. So with this formula, we use carbon black, HTPB, thermocells, and a lot of plasticizer. That way it would flow easier into a mandrel. We made this large batch without the curative. That way we could uh, adjust the formula as we were testing to get better results. Uh, what we did was we pre-cut the grains, we cored them out, and then we poured that mixture into our grains with 3D printed mandrels. We used a very liberal amount of mold release on all the components that were 3D printed. That way the formula would not stick to the plastic parts, but would bond directly to the propellant. The inhibitor shares the same plasticizer and same binder as the propellant, so it's more chemically compatible. When the inhibitor is finally cured, we're able to pull it out and this was the results. We get a relatively consistent layer of inhibitor on the inner surface of the propellant grain. The difference in thickness is more down to the inaccuracy of drilling the holes for the propellant rather than the mandrel itself. While it is not perfect, it is the best way we have so far experimented to apply the inhibitor on the internal surface and keep the inner core as straight as possible. We have also experimented with having pressure pour it down instead of letting gravity do it, and that led to slightly better results. This is a look down the core of the propellant. So we started from the bulkhead and we're working our way back. This black is the inhibited section. So there's primarily two major inhibited areas. This is the last inhibited section of the rocket motor, and this is closer to the nozzle. It may be hard to tell, but this core of the propellant also opens up as it gets toward the nozzle. Another important aspect of this project for test two is being able to record real live data. That'll help diagnose a lot of the issues and tell us a lot of important information for test number three. I appreciate everyone that helped me figure out how to wire this up and calibrate it. The data that we're collecting is primarily the thrust on a load cell as well as the pressure inside the motor. Big thanks to Matt from Fudbusters for allowing us to use some of his property to do the test. Support like that makes this all possible in the end. So we used drainage pipe this time to keep the sand above the rocket motor to make sure that it does not influence or put pressure on the rocket. We made sure to dig out a piece of land so that we had a berm in the front and the back of the rocket that would help contain any fire or explosion from the rocket that helps keep the property safe and keep everyone else safe too. In five, four, three, two, one.
As you can see, that was a pretty fiery explosion. However, we got a lot of data. And a good thing is the equipment that we use to collect the data also survives. So we take less of a financial hit for this test. The, the test stand itself also survived. We only lost a couple of the mounts. So that is a positive. The key takeaways from this test was the peak pressure when the rocket blew up was around 2000 PSI. The tube should have held much longer. However, I believe that there is a fault in the mount putting a stress uh, on the edge of that mount and it made a perfectly clean cut around the motor, which I've never seen a carbon fiber tube break like that. So that was interesting to see. We can improve our uh, mounting system next time. I think the rocket motor would have blown up regardless. It really comes down to the propellant. It burns too fast and as the pressure increases, the burn rate increases as well. It accelerates the problem. Um, it would require a very, very strong tube. And, and at that point you run into weight savings issues. It was also interesting to notice that the thrust was over 600 pounds of thrust during peak burn. Um, that is way more than what we what we need, but it is good to see that even at this very commercially slow propellant that it was able to meet the and far exceed the propellant thrust that we need So yeah, burn through there there. That's gone. That is what got ejected. There's a bunch of carbon right there that was on fire That was the last of the um, can we find the nozzle? We will uh, in a second. Oh, yeah Oh, oh. Oh, that blew off. Oh, well, that's, oh, it blew off. Is that the nozzle right here? No. Oh, that's the whole. All right, so you see how you have these surfaces that are on the outside and they're charred mm -hmm. and they're concave and they go back along it. Burnt through? The flame front, this is a glue front. The flame came in and was burning back along. Uh, okay. You were burning on the carbon from the very beginning. That's plain as day right there on the end. You see how it goes from black, dark gray to it's still got the nice green color of mm -hmm. raw propellant. Yeah. There's some cracking here. Do you think that's more explosion? Which cracking? R right there in the center. Yes, that is definitely from when it came apart. Yeah, because it would have gave way, and this stuff's pretty soft. Like there, if the motor case, get, it's attached to the motor case. You can see the cracking right there, and it's actually still fairly clear. There's no carbon. I have to be one single grain. So, let's see. You see how there's a crack? There's no burning in the crack, and you can even close it up real nice. So that definitely exploded and tore. <sighs> The new motor technically lasted a few milliseconds more than the previous motor. What's interesting to notice is that the black in the initial burning is the inhibitor and it technically does work slowly pr uh, improving the uh, peak pressure. However, once that burns away, the motor starts to chain reaction and then explodes. So going forward, our next plan is to instead of buying commercial grains of propellant we're going to mix our own propellant and we're going to use a lot of additives that slow that burn rate down and give it a more of a plateau burn um, that way we have a more controllable propellant we're going to set everything up again uh, same kind of shape just in, instead of a bunch of little grains it's going to be a single grain of propellant with an inhibitor we're going to go back to those aluminum shields like the original pattern and we're going to collect the data and see if we're able to get closer to the original uh, burn profile of the swizzle stick. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a share. Um, also, if you want to financially support us and make these tests possible, we are selling our books on Amazon. They'll be linked down below. We now have a PDF copy of that book, so please consider getting a copy. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed.